You know what? Just you know what? Screw it. Play the actual music. <laughs> And that's all I'm going to play because, uh, you know, copyright and all of that. But welcome to Nirvana Podcast for this for this special treat. This is gonna we're trying gonna make this a special two part review session for the classic, the masterpiece, the icon, Jaws. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yeah. This has been. Honestly, I don't know why we haven't reviewed this until now. We've been doing this review series for about a year and a half, roughly. Mm -hmm. And we're just now getting the Jaws. <laughs> but it, assuming everything goes according to plan, this uh -huh. should be coming out on the 4th of July. Uh-huh. In that case, happy Independence Day, everyone. Next, the, ne the second half should be up the next day. And uh, to all our friends over in the UK, yes, this is Happy Trader Day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I forget that. I wonder if it... I don't think it's actually called that in the UK, though. If it it's, is, it, I wouldn't be... <laughs> if it is, I wouldn't be shocked. It's a running joke they have with us. Oh, it is. <laughs> uh, all right, so Jaws, Mr. Benoit, what we have here is a perfect reel and an absolute masterpiece. All this masterpiece does is scare and play and inspire new filmmakers. Yes. Okay, that's it. Review over. You. Yes, review. <laughs> See you, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> this and I and I, I really mean it. This is an absolute. This is an absolute masterpiece of a film. It is. Uh, I've watched. I've watched this a hundred times, and it's still just so amazing to watch because it seems to get better and better with it, with every viewing, and it's just it's timeless. I mean, I've I've seen this when I was a kid double digits I mean and yes shark, shark scared me I was afraid to go in the water any type of water after this but no but I still love this Ian was this your first time watching it no I've seen it multiple times uh -huh. I don't know how many times but I got my copy of Jaws for Christmas a couple years back ah uh -huh. 
and I watched it that same night, Christmas night, and it was awesome. It was awesome. I was like, I was like 15 years old, so it was, it was great. I loved it. Oh yeah. I st- I still love it. And it's, and uh, it's actually be- and it has always been my. It's been one of my favorite movies. Uh, but it's but uh, now I th- I think with the with this year it's actually become my all time favorite movie because it just seems to fit twenty twenty so well. <laughs> I I know I'm so I know uh, I I know if you're listen if you're listening that's kind of a down that's kind of a a, a pessimistic way of saying that but. It just struck me, you know, when I'm ha- I had a conversation, you know, when I'm talking with mo- with mom and st- and hearing all the- about these uh, uh, these White House pr- uh, White House uh, uh, con- press conferences and ha- and how we got there's something that is that is harming the safety of not, of not only American citizens but the people of the world and our pr- and our leader is just doing nothing about it and i just brought up sort of reminds me of the reminds me of the council scene from jaws i mean there's a i mean there's a clear there's a clear danger that is happening that is happening but they kind of treat it as it's just and they but they kind of treat it as this is not something to be taken seriously and and so yeah be, so yeah the scene where where uh, uh, where they have to cl- where uh, Brody is telling that everyone that they have to close the beaches. O- Mayor overrides and saying only for twenty four hours is just sort of kind of remi- and sort of kind of reminds me of the time that when I heard that um, that uh, you know America is going to be closed, all the stores are going to be closing. I can't go to any conventions now. <sighs> For what for what could possibly be a year because because of this and uh, and then our president our president says we'll be reopen uh, reopening soon I I felt I felt like I was in t- in so many different places I mean I was in the I was in the townspeople's mind of how like 24 hours is like two weeks okay I lived in isolation for three weeks okay <laughs> So check yourself. Twenty-four hours is nothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. At least not na- well nowadays. Back in the seventies, there was no internet. Eh, true. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, my it just Jaws now feels like it's so much more timeless now, and doesn't matter matter whether it's like. An environmental crisis, a biological crisis, a, a political crisis, anything. It just feels like it fits in anything. Uh, so, so, yeah, that's my position on the movie. I love it, absolutely. It's a masterpiece. Ian, what about you? Jaws, for me... It's a good film. I, it's not a good film. It's a great film. I love it. <laughs> but there's a lot of impact that both impact my work from this film as well mm-hmm. as the work of other people that are in related fields to me. Mm-hmm. Not all of them good, but certainly inspiring. And first and foremost is what Jaws has done environmentally negative mostly negative some positive I see a cat yeah he decided to join that's fine but now when Jaws was released or before it was released and while it was being released in the theaters do you know how much money Universal spent on advertising um, uh, no. A million dollars. In 74, 75. Which is a lot of money back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they did that to create what is called a Jaws Consciousness. I'll throw a link your way 
that you can put in the description if people want to check this out. Uh, Trey the Explainer did a video on this, uh, and he reached out to a whole bunch of shark experts. Jaws marketing wanted to create a quote Jaws consciousness to make uh -huh. people afraid of sharks. Hmm. And that has impacted our world negatively. Mm -hmm. Although it's not entirely Jaws' fault. It is a product of its time. We didn't really know that much. And it's, That's... first and foremost, a horror thriller film. Yeah. Yeah. It... Yes, it is. it's a horror movie where the monster is really not a product of mad science. It's not an it's not an alien. It is in fact a natural. It is in fact a natural creature. In fact, in fact, what you said of what you said about how it's a product of his time kind of reminds me. I did I did catch a video on YouTube about how Jaws is impossible to remake. And I, I just watched a video on that today, actually. Yeah, and one of the things is that pe we now know, well, science now knows a lot more about about sharks, not just great whites, but all, all kinds of sharks in general uh, that, than they did in the 1970s. In fact, Peter Benchley, the, the author of the original novel that the movie is based on, said that if he did, if he knew what... He, what he knew about sharks back then, he wouldn't have, have written the novel. Mm -hmm. I, I just watched that, I think, the same video you're talking about. Okay. And honestly, it... Jaws, if... If it was just Jaws and its series, it probably would have faded away. The Jaws mythos probably would have faded. Except a television phenomenon in the mid to early mid sometime in the 80s came out shark week oh shark week yeah and, and shark week i i used to love it i used to love shark week i think i think a lot of us had had that phase and now seeing what they've well first and foremost their whole megalodon mockumentary series just laughable Oh they, my god. Do you remember just... what I'm talking about, John? No, I don't remember. It just brought up memories of the of a super volcano mock not like documentary but like a what like a what if made for TV movie like if the caldera under the caldera under uh Yellowstone National Park would erupt. Oh. Yeah, no, there's <laughs> um the video or the "Quote unquote documentary." I'm, I'm air quoting. Mm -hmm. I think is, the, I think the listen I think the listeners can in, can interpret that in I your hope, tone. I hope so. Uh, they claim <laughs> it was a mockumentary that that tried to say that megalodon never went extinct. And based on um, everything we know about that animal and related species, there's no way it would be able to live modern day simply due to geologic activity and it and if it didn't go extinct we would be seeing them all the time okay it, 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 it's, a, it's a terrible thing that they, <laughs> that they made but re regardless uh, Shark Week has lost my respect uh, simply due to how it portrays shark initially they uh -huh. tried to educate people on shark you know show people and... that they are you know just real animal uh-huh and nowadays being on how they portray sharks now with just the titles of their shows like blood in the water and monster fish and all that stuff mm -hmm. it okay really perpetuates the jaws mythos a lot more than it would be if they stayed to what sharks actually are. Yeah. And, and yeah. Honestly, partially due to Jaws, sharks were soon, or very quickly actually, started to be hunted. Mm. Not just great whites, which the animal in this film is. Yes. All sharks. 
<laughs> and I want you to tell and me I... what happens when you take out the apex, most of the apex predators in an ecosystem. Well, ba well, let's see. Based on what I heard from Kong Skull Island, because there is an actual, there is an actual like uh, natural scientist on the uh, on the team says that uh, says that. Uh, if you if you take out a dominant species dominant species a competitor or at least in this its competitor or at least in this case its prey will will uh, its population will exponentially grow and and deplete its resources generally yes although we are also eating the fish that the mm -hmm. sharks would generally eat as well mm -hmm. and honestly it kind of draws fault, the film. Uh, based on the limited knowledge that lawmakers have on sharks and, you know, just marine biology, uh, mm -hmm. they passed legislation very quickly that put essentially open season on sharks for decades. Wow. Wow. So now animals that would be the size of the of the shark and jaws are exceedingly rare. You rarely mm. see large white sharks over 17 feet. Mm. As opposed to the 25 footer in jaws. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's so yeah, there's an environment there are this movie, I'm not ignoring the fact that there was some negative environmental impact impact that this film made and 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 yes this movie did did uh false falsely plant the idea of that shark that sharks are man eaters um that's but that's kind of but i'm going to say that's kind of why we need uh why we definitely need scientists why we need why we need conservationists why we need people like you ian the, to Keep it to make sure that this knowledge, uh, set, or at least this false knowledge, uh, is, uh, is brought is brought to light, and that re and that uh, truth actually and truth is you know in the public conversation. It, yes, and that's a good segue into the positive effects of Jaws. Mm -hmm. Not only does it inspire filmmakers, but it inspires scientists. Without Jaws, sharks probably wouldn't be the phenomenon that they are now. Mm hmm I mean, everybody knows sharks. Everybody loves sharks. Most people love sharks, I should most say. Pe most people love sharks. The, uh, the, uh, the others are normally afraid of them. Perhaps, yes. I had a few friends that were afraid of sharks, and I'm like, we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> and it was... And... Frankly, I love the scientist character in Jaws. Yeah, of course. Matt I, Hooper. <laughs> yeah, played I by am Matt Hooper. <laughs> yeah, played by Richard Dreyfuss. And I, and one of the scenes that I that uh, one of the scenes that definitely shows uh, you know you know the scientific you know j where it just really showcases the scientific the scientific method is when they is when. Uh, the scene on the dock with with the tiger shark. You know, everyone thinks that they could, that they caught it. Matt's and while everyone's celebrating, Matt's just there. You know, like eh, doing in the zone, and he's taking taking all these measurements of the of the button of the tiger shark's jaw, and and comes back and says to Bro says to Brody that uh, that. Uh, this, this shark, the the bite radius on this animal is much, is different than the wounds on the victim. I and I couldn't. I mean, it's I mean it is possible that they did ca catch the shark because this is rare and it it is rare in these waters. Uh, but but I'm not going to I'm not going to say that uh, they caught the shark just yet. Yeah, and honestly, when I saw him pull out the tape measure and start taking measurements of the mouth, I was like. That's me! That's me! Because I would, I, I'd be doing that. And... And then... Right when I saw the teeth, when they opened up the dark mouth, I'm like... 
I got some of those teeth somewhere around here. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> act, it, act, it actually was a real tiger shark. Oh, that, that, it was? It was a real tiger shark. And it's funny because when I rewatched this uh, uh, some, t- some time ago, like very recently, like a month ago, I thought, wow, that shark looks very realistic because because of the new knowledge. Now, everyone, everyone kind of, or film geeks and scientists know that shark skin is not smooth. It's not soft. Not at all. And when, and just seeing the skin fold on, it looked like foam. It, it looked like foam. And I, I was like, wow, that shark looks very realistic. Good job on them. Only to go on to IMDb and say, to find out, holy shit! That shark was real, and it really did stink up the dock. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> the shark carcasses do stink. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just seeing the scientific analysis go into that ti- that entire scene with the tiger shark is like, I like that. I really, really <laughs> like that. And just the fact that they called in a scientist to help them is like, thank you for listening to someone who would actually know what the shit is. (coughs) Yeah, and I definitely love, I definitely love the chemistry that Hooper and Brody had had together, especially in the uh, the dining, especially the dining rooms, the dining room scene. Uh, Of course, there's a lot, there's a lot going on, but I just like. There's a lot of good lines in in this, since one of them on my on my list is uh, Hooper saying that you're only you're gonna be the only rational man left on this island when when I'm gone. <laughs> Another one from that scene I liked was, so how was your day? <laughs> oh god! And, let's see. He brings o- Hooper brings over two bottles of wine. They take the red one. Brody pours uh, into the wine glass, and then he pours it into his tall into his tall water glass. Well, he needed it. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> I yeah. This like I said, this film is re- now even though this now the movie itself, what we got is perfect. The journey making that was absolute hell. Oh my gosh. I think everybody knows. There might be that one person that doesn't know, but I'm pretty I'm... sure it's really easy to find all the information on oh, how yeah, it's... bad the production went. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's and see. Uh, the, 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 the most common one that they'll find is that, of course, the shark did not work most oh of the God. time. I, it worked a little bit. <laughs> it worked... It worked a little bit. The the little and uh, that little bit was what made it into the film. Most of the time, it just did not work, and that was mostly because uh, it was on a rail system that was put in salt water. Yeah. Mm. Salt water and metal don't mix. Salt and water fact, and the- electronics, especially, don't mix. I think. Well, I think uh, that would. I think. The mechanics were mostly steam powered. Okay. It could have been steam. Pa- I had no idea how the. I didn't. I had no idea how the, the rigging system worked. But I do. But I do know that usually when the shark shark pops up, you do see like some steam come out, or it could be, or you know, it just could be you know the water, heat. You know the water heating up or being sprayed everywhere. Yeah, and it's. I, I, aside from the shark constantly malfunctioning. Mm hmm. And there, I know they had to do several retakes because when you see the shark swimming along and you just see its uh, dorsal fin and its tail moving along. Uh huh. C- coming out of what's called the pond. It, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> the. Um, "Quote unquote model." It was literally just the dorsal fin and part of the tail. Yeah, would raise yeah. Up out, and you would see the metal rigging underneath. And it's like you went too high up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and retake. Yeah, and you, you know what? I I also got to admire the little de- the little detail in that because 
uh, you even before before Jaws, uh, that you know there's some sometimes kids programming or even or or anything that has a shark in, a shark in it, uh, will will usually just show the fin, you know, slicing through <laughs> slicing through the top, and when you see a wide shot of the shark, you know the fin. It was the, it was the fin, and the and the tail from behind it. When I saw that first, I was like, "Holy crap! There's two of them!" <laughs> no, and that's the second. That that'll be the second movie. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I've seen the second movie, and I barely remember it. <laughs> second, the second one was all was all right, but but. Uh, no, it. But no, it was the. No, it was the tail, and apparently that is supposed to be very. Is supposed to be accurate. Mm -hmm. I. I think so. When you do, when a shark's fin does pop, pop up, uh, you know, break through the surface of the water, so does the tip of its tail. Well, yeah, because it's generally streamlined, and of course mm -hmm. the tail will be held roughly straight out. Yeah, but so far in in uh, future in future sequels, and. And uh, a lot, and a lot of uh, other movies and TV shows would actually take from this. Only shows the fin. Not and all of them are like Luna, guys. Their tails are generally healthy. Luna's a larger great white that had the bent tail fin. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, it's... and so I got to admire that little deep detail of it but so getting but getting back to this is kind of the th this is what this is kind of what makes jaws also very great in its in its own right is because spielberg originally his original vision for jaws was to have the shark show up a lot mm -hmm. in the in the movie but because of the whole man because of the because it the shark kept malfunctioning which uh uh so just so that it's out there, they named it Bruce, and so now I can't watch Finding Nemo without giggling a little bit. That's a direct. That's a direct reference. I know. That's why I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, think about it. Great White. His name is Bruce. Come on. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, I giggle a little bit. Anyway, but uh, the malfunctioning actually served as a served as kind of like a blessing in the long run because. Uh, one of one of Spielberg's greatest influences as a filmmaker was Alfred Hitchcock, who's you know, who is dubbed the master of suspense. And so, and so it's what, and so how Hitchcock describes writing suspense is that uh, the audience knows something that the the people on screen don't, and that. And that's kind of what it, and that's what makes the first Jaws such a perfect, such a perfect Hitchcockian horror movie, is that we know the shark is there, either when we see when we see it from its from its point of view, such as the opening scene with with the uh, female swimmer, uh, or when we or when we hear it when we hear its theme song. Yeah, it's what we don't see that actually makes it much more scarier and that's why the, and that's why the scene and that's why the scene on the boat uh the boat when the, when they're out when the crew is out searching for it and it pops up finally that's what makes it so genuinely scary mm -hmm. and, and so honestly i feel like <laughs> this film and how it did that? What, did they, did Spielberg take that from Hitchcock? Uh, the show don't tell in horror. Did Hitchcock? I don't. As I said, he, as I said, uh, I think he did. Because as I said, Hitchcock was one of one of uh, uh, his influence, one of Spielberg's influences. And so he, so he did describe it as as trying to make. Is trying to make the movie more like a Hitchcock, like Hitchcockian. Mm. In fact, one, in fact, uh, the most icon, the iconic shot, uh, on, uh, of Cheap Brody, you know, right after the boy, after the boy gets dragged down and eaten, uh, was, 
you know, where the, where uh, the camera is zoom in, zooming in, and but the background seems to be just zooming out. The dolly zoom. That is called the. It was originally called the Vertigo shot because its first appearance was in the movie Vertigo, by Hel Alfred Hitchcock. Yes. Honestly, great cinematography in this film. Oh yes. As, like we, so you get POV shots uh, uh, from the shark, and you even get, the, and there's even shots of camera in the water, which. I don't know. I would like to. I would like to see some behind-the-scene photos of of those kinds of shots because I want to know how big that camera was and what was the, was the rig they used to get it to get it in there. If I recall correctly, don't quote me on this. I think it was just a big box. A big button. A big box. I would. I would have sworn it was literally just a giant transparent box with a window. Hmm. Now, Ed, you know what? Speaking of, you know, underwater shot shots, I mean, there is, there's, uh, as you get older, you do tend to find out, like, which, like, especially the shark cage scene is really what I'm trying to get, is what I'm trying to get at. And, uh... When you watch this enough times, you tend you get to be able to pick out like, oh, that's a fake shark. That's an actual shark. Yes. They use and real so, sharks for some of those shots. Uh huh. Yeah. So it and uh, it was a scale model of the boat and and the shark cage and uh, the sh and uh, the one shot. Uh, where the where the great white is actually on top of the on top of the cage and you know it's just like like pi like pile driving or barrel rolling that th that thing it was actually an accident but I guess Bob Ross would call that a happy accident. <laughs> you know what actually happened there? What? The shark got stuck in the rope. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it got <laughs> stuck in the rope and. And it kept trying to get out, and it proceeded to destroy the cage. <laughs> well, well I, hopefully the shark wasn't wasn't harmed too bad. No, it got I out. Mean, it, it was fine. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it just made. I mean, it it just made for some for some great. It made for some great footage and really good way to just to just. And just add even more fear, like oh my, oh my God, is Hooper gonna is Hooper gonna survive? Yeah, cause he get cause during that take, uh, he they forgot to put the scale dummy in the cage, so it was just this shark tearing apart a cage while it was trying to get out of rope. Mm -hmm. so, so they edited the film and the story a bit to have him swim out and survive. So I'm like. Way to make use of unplanned footage. <laughs> yeah, like, I, uh, yeah, filmmaking is a is pretty much uh, a, is it's a it's a crapshoot and a game of roulette all in all in one. I mean, it's it's all a matter of it's all a matter of luck and it's and uh, it challenges your problem solving abilities. Oh yeah, and Joe. And Jaws is definitely one is definitely one where there were a lot of problems that they had to solve, and oh. they and they and they pulled it off. They really did. <laughs> and right. it, it's uh, worth it because how many how many shows, copycat movies, have there been that at least reference Jaws? Oh, there's a, a lot of movie. There's a lot of movies that just that definitely are just direct rip that are direct ripoffs or just oh just overall sh just shams or mo or ma mockbusters of Jaws from let's see from the from the from Shark Attack to to Sharknado <laughs> to, to Shark to Sharktopus to the Meg. Oh, the Meg! That the bet the Meg has got to be like the pe the peak of shark movie shit. 
I and have that not is seen include- it, and I'm half tempted to go through it and pick out everything scientifically wrong. Uh, so that'll be a three-hour th- review. That w- that would be a three-hour review. I think my problem is that it's just absolutely predictable. And the funny thing is, I knew it would be shit because, unfortunately, Char- uh, Jaws is a- Jaws is a movie is a movie of firsts. It was the first summer blockbuster. It was actually the uh, one of the first horror movies to actually be nominated for for an Oscar. I think I might be assuming on that. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> shut your vibration mouth. Where is that setting? I heard a meow. Yeah, that's yep. Yeah, that's uh, that's my cat. Come on, hiccup. There we, there you are. All right, it, all right, it cemented Steven Spielberg as, uh, as uh, one, as uh, one of the great directors, and it was technically, I think, his second or third feature film, actually. I think it was his second. Yeah, because I know of Sugarland Express, and I don't know if if it was Jaws next or Duel. I, I, Duel came before Jaws. I, I remember that from the special feature. Alright, so then this is his third. This would be his third. Not bad for a third film. <laughs> I, kn- I know, I know. And unfor- unfortunately, Jaws, along with the negative environmental impacts, which we talked about earlier, there's a, it also pretty much sp- it pretty much just started a, a genre. Of, sh- of shark movies, and most and most of them have the reputation of being shitty because they just can't li- because they th- either the people writing it uh, know- knows that it just can't live up to Jaws, or the- or they just really don't get or they really don't care at all. So, like I said, shark shark attacks. The Shark Attack movies one, two, and three, which is which three is actually an even shittier version of the Meg because it is, involves a, meg- a megalodon. Uh, the, uh, the Sharknados, Shark Sharktopus, that they're kind of get a pass because they are because they are intentionally bad. They are so bad they're good, and I also give Deep Blue Sea a pass because it's almost like Jaws. Meets Jurassic Park, without it, without really any of the pressure of just trying to be good. Mm. I haven't seen it. I think Sam L. Jackson's in that one, right? He is. Yeah. <laughs> and fun, funny enough, yeah. Like, which makes the Jurassic Park reference even more funnier. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, but the movies that, but the movies that are just direct ripoff of Jaws. Uh, they are, they are just it. They're completely unashamed uh, to admit that uh, they are that uh, they are that they are crap, because they have because for a shark movie it'll have some cliches on it that came from Jaws. One one is of course calling uh, calling a shark a son of a bitch or at least some form of it. And and the shark and it and for some reason because Jaws started it at the end of every movie a shark must blow up. You know what I want to see? A good shark movie. Well, we have that. <laughs> it's called I know it's a, one that's just not jaw that's not Jaws. Yes, I want to see. Something in the style of Jaws, but a more conservation story, because we, we get all these crap shark movies, seemingly every couple of years, and all of them mm-hmm. involve, you know, murdering sharks, killing sharks, because, you know, reason. And yeah. I want to see a conservation story. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, there's a, there's, and there's a, you have a problem with shark attacks. You can't exactly kill them. Because how you know you get the right one? True. So just make it a conservation story. Mm-hmm. And 
that is all right and it's all and uh that's also not counting some of some of the not spin-offs uh but the rip-offs that uh that involve killer uh killer animals most of them aqu aquatic that uh i f that i found from found on wikipedia it was a brief it was a brief uh, glance at the page but bar but barracuda uh d orca the killer whale oh, which I'm, I'm actually i saw that one i i which, saw that um reference on which i'm on wikipedia uh i think Wait, it was a comment on youtube on one of the videos i was watching yeah which i'm honestly curious about because because it turned because as it turns out the orca is an, is a natural enemy and predator of a great white which makes and... the fact that the boat which makes the <laughs> fact that the boat is named orca even more hilarious i was actually gonna go to that <laughs> sorry i've been i <laughs> sorry i beat you to that oh well uh what uh what well since there was a pause in my since there was a pause in that, why don't you, why don't you say it and I'll and I'll edit that. <laughs> okay, which actually makes the fact that the boat is called the Orca even ho more hilarious. <laughs> yes, it. Is. Yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, and of course we can't for we can't forget about uh, the Joe Dante classic. Well. I don't know if you know about this one, Ian, but I'm a film nerd, so I do know. Piranha. Removing headphones, walking away. Uh, I'm not talking about... I'm not talking about the re Spring Break remake. I'm back. Okay, I'm not talking about the Spring... I said the Joe Dante one, so this is the original 1970s one, not the... 2000 the 2010s uh, spring break remake that was it is well essentially softcore porn oh okay yeah <laughs> yeah yes uh, the prana you're thinking about was a remake no wonder it looked terrible mm-hmm <laughs> well not all remakes are <laughs> Remakes know, are bad. It, it, that I know. Type. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> oh, and anyway, uh, honestly, I think Jaws kind of did start my kind of love of giant of giant monster movies, more nat of uh, more natural earth creatures. Uh, uh, not Godzilla. I have Power Rangers to thank for that. <laughs> Uh, but uh, Lake Placid and Anaconda, uh, those one, you doesn't like Anaconda? I I've seen clips of it. It's so bad. Yeah, ha it having is. worked with snakes, it is so bad. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah. So I, I. So we all do kind of most uh of us do have that phase where uh where we didn't where we do pick out a certain horror genre me it was me i guess it was giant monsters because i like the i like the idea that uh these are creatures that do exist and could probably exist but but in reality no like there's not gonna be the make there's not gonna be a mako the size of a blue whale the hell the deep blue sea. Uh, yet yeah, no. Okay, there's never. Well, it was only that. It was only that size because it was genetically altered. Oh. Yeah, there's not. There's not. I'm not gonna see a crocodile. Hope you know the size of a semi. Hopefully. Uh... When I say when I when I say size, I guess I I mean the length of one of the length of a semi uh i'm gonna send you a picture <laughs> later <laughs> and, <laughs> and even though i know they exist i'm never gonna i'm not gonna be in an area where anacondas and pythons uh are common 
Don't go to Florida. Noted. <laughs> uh, they, they have an invasive species problem with uh, reticulate uh, Burmese pythons, I believe. Ooh. Yeah, so... But... Okay. Yeah. Wait, which mean, part? Which part? Which part of Florida is it? All of Florida? Everglade. Just the Everglades. I okay. think so. Don't quote me on that, but that's where I know they have a serious issue with them. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I can. But I can bring this. All, I can bring it all back to Jaws because, uh, it's it, because it is that. I guess it is that uh, iconic. Horror, horror, it's that iconic monster horror movie, uh, natural monster horror movie. And, okay, yeah. <laughs> I thought like, you had more to say. <laughs> no, I don't think, no, I don't think I have any, I think, but I think it, I think it's because these are, these are actual creatures, there is some semblance of realism to it, which, which makes the, which may, makes the scares much more, well, even more, even more intense. Mm -hmm. And so, that's, that's, and so I, I, that's what I like. I like a sense of realism in my, in my horror. I like a, a sense of realism in my in my visual effects. I just like a sense of realism. So do I. And honestly, I got into a lot of that sort of same thing, like big monster movies from not Jaws, but Jurassic Park. I'm not the yeah, look, look, at, look at my set. I know, I but. Know. It's uh tying that into Jaws. We honestly need more. Well, I should say more. We need better movies like that. We need more realistic threat. Now we can always have you know the nice alien movie or you know the Predator movie or. Mm hmm. We're not even gonna go to Terminator. I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna stay away from that topic for now. But yeah, well, 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 franchise technically dead now. Oh, okay. Mm hmm But I mean, it. We need better movies with real animals. It doesn't always have to be horror movies. It can be, like I said, conservation stories or just you know a pure survival story with real animals and. Honestly, I think that's a good way to tie in, you know, the majesty and beauty of these natural creatures that do exist in our world to, to show that, you know, they are, they live alongside us and they can still be dangerous. They can still be deadly. I would like mm -hmm. to see a, something of a survival story about people stranded somewhere with cassowaries. With what? Cassowaries. What are those? Uh, about five foot tall ratite bird, uh, flightless. Uh, they have a large, elongated claw on their foot. So they're like emus or ostriches? Yes. They have a little they Only... have a bony crest on their head. Uh, I think last year or something, a guy got killed by his quote unquote pet cassowary. <laughs> it actually gutted him. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, go to open up a tab right now, please. <laughs> okay. Type in cassowary attack and press is enter. That, is that with a K or a C? C. C A S S O R Y. I think I spelled that right. S S S O R Y. Casso O W A R Y. Cassowary attack. There we go. And press enter. Take a look at what they. Cassowary attack. Giant bird kills owner in Florida, of course. <laughs> Go to images. Oh, that! Oh, that bird. So that's what it was. I remember that from Fern Gully. <laughs> yeah, they're dinosaurs, dude. <laughs> I. Well, of course they're birds. Don't tell me feathered dinosaurs aren't scary. 
Okay. All right, that bird could probably be be scary since uh, since uh, you know it could kill me, and there it's got go. a claw. But anyway, back to Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. And I all right. I kind of agree with you on on that, Ian. That we would we would need more. We should have more movies that don't that do that are not necessarily you know the horror element, or at least not the whole uh, this whole killer the whole killer animal man eater kind kind of thing. Attack but of I the don't killer think shrews. Remember that. But though. I don't. <laughs> but I don't think they should be gone. I don't think they should be gone in entirely. They are pr they are pretty basic. They're basic films, and and they have a ba and they're basic stories. They're I think they're good for for uh, new filmmakers. You know, for, you know, especially ones who want to start out. Same thing with Jaws. Yeah. They just have but to be yeah. done well. Yeah. <laughs> All right, all right, so, all right, so, all right, so, uh, there's, there's kind of like a lot of, uh, this movie does have, uh, has a lot of influences in it. Uh, the most obvious one is Moby Dick in the, oh, in the yeah. form of, in the form of, uh, uh, Quint. Yeah. Uh, but the, but the beginning half is uh, I've actually did mention briefly mention this in uh, my original review series uh, how the first half is like the uh, this Norwegian play called an enemy of the people and uh, it's and it's actually roughly the same it's roughly the same thing it's very similar it involve it does involve uh, someone who knows that knows that uh, something that Britain is that uh, something is harming citizen something is harming citizens but this is something but uh, the thing that's harming them is actually what give what makes their town prosper it's an e it is an economic boom for them uh, but be but because they're so the economy is so dependent on it that they are just reluctant that the people are kind of reluctant to sh to get rid of the problem and the problem is in the form of a toxic bacteria in their spas. Ah, I think I remember this video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it basically... I, I can sum up all of these things. Issue arises, authorities, most authorities do absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. And and quite fr and quite frankly, uh, it, when you're when you're young, it's kind of pretty clear. It's when you're young, it's pretty clear that uh, you ha uh, there's your heroes and villains. It's it's obviously Chief Brody and Matt Hooper. They're the heroes. The shark and the mayor. They're the they're the bad guys. But the, and it's that it's that night. It's just that naive black and white mentality. But as you kind of get older, you kind you can kind of understand that there is some gray area to that. Mm -hmm. The mayor is is not a is not a bad guy. I mean, yes, he didn't handle he didn't handle the shark the shark problem. But to be fair, even even the doc who gave the gave the report at the beginning also backtrack on his initial finding. His initial finding, uh, he was more concerned about the town, the town's economy. Mm -hmm. And the, you, honestly, that's a good film. You don't see too many films like that nowadays, where you know most of the human characters are. I, I actually have to disagree that the mayor is even bad. I mean, he he's looking out for the townspeople. He knows yes, that, the, yeah. like you said, the town, like, well, quote from the movie, Amity is a summer town. They need summer dollars. Mm-hmm. And if you look into, like, well, Chief Brody is obviously tr also looking out for the people. He just knows yes. there's a big predatory fish in the water. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hooper is also concerned about the fish problem. And Quint, he's 
Again, not a bad guy. He's 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 more obs he's more obsessed because of some f some form what I called survivor's guilt in my original video, which I still believe that. Yeah, uh, I survivor's guilt, and I think also a bit of vengeance. He wants vengeance mm -hmm. for what happened. Yeah. Uh, that's part of why I think you can't exactly remake Jaws nowadays, because one Quint would obviously be portrayed as a villain. Oh my God, he he would he would be a pra he would practically be a Bond villain. And that the it, mayor yeah. would probably also be portrayed more of a villain. Yes. Once again, they wouldn't listen to the scientists at all. That mm -hmm. would, that much would probably more than likely stay the same. And Chief Brody mm -hmm. would probably, you know, be portrayed by Dwayne Rock Johnson or somebody or other. <laughs> oh, and the scientist would be would be Kevin Hart. We we watched the same exact video. <laughs> Oh, I, oh, I don't know if I did. I don't know if I did see that video, but you know, Rock and Kevin Hart. I mean, we all, I mean, we all know that they're now the neck, they're they're the next big guy, small guy pairing since since uh, Schwarzenegger and DeVito. <laughs> and on, uh, honestly, just seeing, and that goes into those reports that were, or at least rumors that were floating around the internet a couple years back that Spielberg would remake Jaws. Oh, jeez. Do you remember that? that? No, I don't I don't remember that and it would be very and it would be very out of character for him because he along with a very with a handful of other filmmakers st don't shoot don't shoot their films digitally. They still you they still use the old celluloid reels because that gives because that gives film its look. So he, I, he's a, so he's very he's very old fashioned and uh, he's all but he's also very protective of of his of his creations. Mm -hmm. Now if he made it now if he actually if he made a I can see if he made a sequel an actual a sequel to Jaws that ignore ignores 3D and the revenge because 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 two is okay, the the other two was okay. The other the others. Uh uh. I have I haven't seen them. D don't. I I wouldn't recommend 3D or the Revenge. Two is okay. It's just okay. Yeah. But I it, it does I can interesting see. things. Two does interesting things. Mm -hmm. It's not great, but it. <laughs> All right. So I can see Spielberg. I can see Spielberg would make a sequel to Jaws two. Because he did make a sequel to Indiana to Indiana Jones, but then again, the the, the I mean he made the last three. <laughs> but I can't see him. But I can't see him remake remaking his movies, either either by either by way of George Lucas or by George Lucas method, or just simple or really creating something new. I mean, so, mm -hmm. that, that was of a, like a rumor slash report that was floating around the internet a couple years back. Obviously, Spielberg shut that shit down real quick. That's good, cause I, cause I, cause I think, even though he's very proud of Jaws, I mean, he's still, it's, the mechan, the production problem still haunts him to this day. Yeah, I feel. Of remake that thing again, it's gonna go even worse. <laughs> he also said no. that if he did make Jaws and CG was available, he would have mm -hmm. showed the shark a lot more, but probably would have hurt the film. Oh yeah, and and no doubt about that. I wholeheartedly agree. What is really what is really great about the original Jaws that uh, the is how it not only keeps the shark uh, unseen, but how it kind of but but by also how it kind of builds up, you know, with with <laughs> for lack of a for lack of a better term, a bait and switch with the with the tiger shark. Yeah, nice pun. 
Yeah. Because it really isn't, because there's no other better way to describe it. I mean, when you... I mean, it cut... The edit, the editing is oh so, is oh so good. When Hooper is, exam, is examining the remains of the of victim, and, and uh, that scene ends with him going, it's a shark, and it cuts straight to the that mouth of the shark being being hoisted up and you think and you think yes that's the shark it's got to be they get they got it or something or something like that and the, only to hear that it it may be the shark but there's also a possibility it isn't and then and then the tooth comes in and then you then you hear it's a great white this is this is the big one yeah and an abnormally I mean, it's, sized great white at that so they don't go up to 25 feet? Uh, I'm not aware of them getting that big. It's possible. But it's ext- it would be extremely rare. Okay. So, yeah, it's built up so... It's built up so well. Oh, yeah, and you just see little glints. First, you don't see the shark at all. Mm-hmm. Then you, you see a little bit when it's attacking the boy. Oh, yeah. And then you see the tiger shark mouth open, or wrong bite radius, oops. Mm-hmm. And then you see a few more glimpses of it swimming around on 4th of July. Yeah. It drags the and, dude underwater. Yeah. <laughs> and you oh, see yeah. it you... under the water, and just like, oh, shit. And you actually, we actually do get a first, a first full glimpse, full glimpse, uh, of the shark, you know, when he's when he pulls the man down, not just under the water, but he actually does break the surface of the water. Oh, that's bit. right. Yeah, it's just a quick little glimpse. I forget about that, but yeah. And and then we just see its fin, and we don't see it for like half an hour. And the next time we see it, <laughs> we're gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> Slow ahead. Hey, I can go slow ahead. Why don't you come on over here and shovel some of this shit? (laughs) Apparently, according to IMDb, here we go. When a Midwestern audience were shown an early cut of the film, they were so shocked by the pop-up scare that occurs when the great white shark breaches the surface of the water as Brody jumps off the bow of the boat that their reactions drowned out his ironic comment we're gonna need a bigger boat. They were they were so scared. They were screaming so for so long. <laughs> All right, but here's the thing. After reviewing their taping of the moment, the filmmakers extended the sequence, adding another 35 feet of film to give the audience enough time to recover to enjoy the much-needed moment of comic relief. So. In, so in an early cut, a test screening audience, that that the moment between the shark popping up and the iconic line was actually a little bit shorter. Because mm. I thought it was funny. Because I, I was, I thought it was funny. It's like, oh my god, they were actually screaming for thirty seconds. Something. Because I'm just imagining like one guy going, oh, 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 oh my god. Oh! And then it's the whole audience. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, I remember this other bit of trivia. In some of the premieres, when the shark is attacking the little boy on the beach, with all the blood spraying everywhere, people ran out of the theater to throw up in trash cans. <laughs> I, I remember that from somewhere. <laughs> I think oh, it was special I can... features. <laughs> I I kind of believe that. Uh, I, Keep in mind, everyone. And seventy-five. Nineteen seventy-five. Blood was not was not as realistic as it's made to look nowadays, but it's still pretty gross. In fact, I miss that type. I miss that kind of blood. And it's just spraying out of the water, going. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> If you look around, I'm sure you can find, like, old tapes of the initial screening from the premiere, and people are just screaming at that. <laughs> is, is, is it wrong that, when I watched it just today for this review, I was going, yes, 
eat them all! Oh. <laughs> I don't... I don't... Uh, I don't know. I mean, if it was... Probably if it was your first viewing, maybe. <laughs> no, I've seen this before. And I, yeah, so... I, I did the same thing with aliens, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean... Uh, let's this, see. Reading up all the people who saw it in theaters in summer of 75 just oh reading my God, all of those, yes. seeing the old tapes and seeing and reading what everybody I, did in the theaters at certain moments in the film it's just like damn I was born this, in the wrong year <laughs> I I know I sometimes feel, feel that if, if I was actually born in the if I was born in the 70s I per Maybe either Jaws or Close Encounters of the Third Kind would actually be would be the the move the Spielberg movie to, that got me into filmmaking. Yeah, and just oh man! And just so everyone knows, this was released in summer '75. Of night, yes, the first ever summer blockbuster. So we, so we. <laughs> So this is the reason why this is kind of the reason why it's now customary for movies to movies for movies or at least studios to release their their films in the summer. Back then, no one, no, no one went to movie theaters. It was considered dead season for Hollywood. Yeah, because everyone was at the beaches. And what do you do? You release a movie that shows what happens. When a shark invades the beach, <laughs> repeatedly, and and, and but yeah, and by next year, n the beaches were just practically empty. No one went in the water. No one went they, to the beach. They were so, they were so afraid. And uh, and then more than likely, then it would be me. I'm going swimming. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>